Today I wanted to talk about compressors. Not just compressors, but I wanted to talk about the unloaders on a compressor. First of all, let me say, uh, how many types of compressors do we have? Actually, let me correct that. How many body styles of compressors do we have? There are really three different types. You have the Hermetic, Semi-Hermetic, and the Open Compressor. You have those three different types. Open, we typically see that in a car. Hermetic compressor is one that's completely sealed. Semi-hermetic is one that's bolted together. And that's the one I wanted to talk about because I wanted to talk about those unloaders, the unloaders that go on a semi-hermetic compressor. Now, in a compressor, we know that we're gonna have the shell like this, and then we're gonna have the discharge valve, we're gonna have the suction valve, and there's going to be the piston that's here. So now you have this piston, it's going to be in the cylinder, and down at the bottom, we're going to have oil coming in here like this. Now as the piston moves up and down, it's going to pump the refrigerant out like this. It's going to go out into the system. On the other side, we're going to have the suction coming in like this. So now we have gas coming in, it's going to travel through here and it's going out like this. Okay. But what I wanted to talk about was the actual or how they do the loading and unloading. We said that you have your discharge valve like this, you have your suction valve like this, refrigerant gas is going to come in here, the piston is going to be here like this, and that's going to be inside of the cylinder. Now, refrigerant is coming in here, let's say at approximately 68 PSIG. It's going to be going out, let's say, 260 PSIG, because let's say that this is going to happen to be R22. So we're looking at those pressures. If this was 410, the pressures, of course, would be higher and so on. But we know that as the refrigerant comes in, the piston, the piston is going to come down, is going to allow the refrigerant to come in. The suction valve is going to open up. Once it opens up, then it's going to fill the cavity. Once it reaches the bottom, piston is going to start to come up. As the piston comes up, this valve will close. This valve will remain closed until the pressure inside of the cylinder is higher than the discharge pressure. Once it gets up to 260 and a half, 261, it's going to open up the discharge valve and allow the refrigerant to go out into the system. When the piston comes back down, this valve closes. This valve will eventually open up, filling the cylinder with refrigerant. Piston comes up, this valve closes, this will open up. Once it opens, it allows it to go. So it is not a steady blowing of refrigerant. It is more like a puffing what the compressor does. It goes puff, 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 puff. So it just keeps pumping it out. Every time it comes up, pumps it out, comes up, pumps it out, pumps it up, comes up, pumps it out. Now, let's talk about the unloaders. On the unloaders, what happens is, on some of them, not all of them, but what happens is you have a solenoid up here on top. The solenoid is gonna be, usually is gonna be 24 volts. Usually that's 24 volts, so as soon as you put power to this, this generates a magnetic field. Now, one of the things that they have done and I'm not going to show it here, but what happens is internally, this solenoid, once it energizes, it will open up a port. Once it opens up a port, it allows the pressure from the high side here to go through that port, and the way that they have done it, it pushes down on this one rod. This rod pushes down on that suction valve. So now, as the piston comes down, that valve is already open. When the piston comes up, that valve stays open. And because it stays open, that pressure is going to go out this way. The discharge valve will remain closed, maintaining that pressure on this side. But now this piston, as it goes up and down, the pressure is just coming in and back out, in and back out. So it's not doing any work. 
it's not doing any work at all. So now this is what they call unloaded. This is unloaded, it's not doing any work. As soon as they take the 24 volts off, it will close that port. Once it closes the port, this rod comes up, allowing this valve to open and close normally. So that's really how that is going to work. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was how this is actually used to maintain the temperature in a room. So now let me go ahead and do that. Let me get rid of this. So now, let's talk about, like I was saying, a semi-hermetic compressor. In this case, let's say that we have a compressor, semi-hermetic compressor, that happens to have one, two, and let's say three heads like this. Each one of these heads is going to have, in this example, one, two, and three pistons like this. Because we have three pistons, let's say to make life easy, let's say that this happens to be a 30 ton compressor. Now we have a 30 ton compressor. We can easily say that this one is 10 tons, this one is 10 tons, and this one is also 10 tons right there. Beautiful. Now we're gonna put an unloader here, and we're going to put an unloader right there. So now what happens is, as this compressor is running, fully loaded, we're gonna be doing 30 tons worth of cooling. 30 tons. Now, let's say that people leave in the room. Because people leave, we don't need all of that cooling. We don't need to be doing all of that work. So we unload this one right here. We take that one out of the circuit. So what happens is that rod comes down, pushes the suction valve open. This piston is going up and down, but it's not doing any work. So now we end up with a 20 ton compressor. Okay, so more people leave. Because more people leave, we don't need as much cooling. So yeah, we unload this one, and we only have one doing the work. So now we have a 10 ton compressor. Okay, so we're running it with 10 tons. And we're running, 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 the room is empty, heat load drops. Once the heat load drops some more, guess what? Then we can cut it completely off shut the motor off, the pistons do not operate. Okay, the temperature goes up in the room. When the temperature goes up, we start it up with 10 tons. It's running, running, running. We get more people in there. Hey, we start this one up. Now we have a 20 ton compressor. More people come in. Now we start this one up and we end up with that 30 tons now. Now we're doing 30 tons worth of cooling and everything's, everything's good. Everybody's happy. As the heat load increases or decreases, we can make this work as a 30 ton compressor, 20 ton, or a 10 ton compressor. Question is, why would we do this? Well, like I was saying, maybe the heat load has changed. Maybe we don't need as much cooling. There's no point in doing so much work. Also, this could be changed to dehumidify. One thing I wanted to point out is that when your compressor is shut off, your pressures are going to be like this, equal. When the compressor starts up with 10 tons, the discharge pressure is going to go up. The suction is going to drop. As this loads up again to a 20 ton, discharge goes up, suction goes down. Loads up, it loads up fully, it's fully loaded, now we have a high discharge pressure and the lowest suction pressure. And this is where we usually want it to be. This is what we want. So as it unloads, discharge drops, suction goes up. Unloads, suction, the discharge drops, suction goes up. It shuts off, the pressures equalize. That's why it is very important to know if they are loaded or if they are unloaded. Because if you try to charge a system, check superheat, check subcooling, and so on, when this is not fully loaded, it's going to be wrong. 
it's definitely going to be wrong. So you need to make sure that it is fully loaded and that you do have the heat load. So you can check your superheat, check your subcooling, do all the checks that you need to make. So this is your basic operation of your unloaders. Remember, some of these are unloaded when it's energized. Some are loaded when it is energized. You need to look at your compressor and see which one you have. To see if this is energized, you can do a couple of things. You can either check to see if you have 24 volts going to it, or you can take a screwdriver and just hold the screwdriver onto this, see if you can feel the magnetic field. There's a lot I can say about all of this, but let me just leave it at this right now. Again, this you load and you unload. As you load it up, your discharge pressure goes up, suction goes down. As you unload, discharge goes down, suction goes up. This could run off of several things. I remember doing this right off of a thermostat, three-stage thermostat. So we shut off the compressor, load this, bring it on 10 tons, second stage and third stage. So you can run this off of many different things, but hopefully this explains and helps about unloaders on compressors. Again, this is Julio from Aircon Academy. Make sure you like the video, follow the page, and check us out on uh, YouTube. Thank you.